Hey everyone, welcome to a new OpenRT2 tutorial series. In Tutorial Park, I will build a park over the course of uh, these episodes. And in every episode, I will try to teach you uh, several tricks. So it will kind of be like uh, my old tutorial series, but uh, every episode will take place in the same park. And most of my old tutorials uh, are uh, in some way a little bit outdated by now, so I think it will be good to uh, start fresh. Anyway, in this first episode, I will teach you how to build a map and also how to edit a map. So um, you probably uh, all know uh, how to build a map in the scenario editor, but uh, I will quickly go through it and also show some uh, tricks that are unique to OpenRST2. All right, um, first off, when you start the scenario, you end up in the object selection. Now, I think the object selection deserves a tutorial on its own. So, um, yeah, I will just quickly uh, enable all the Rollercoast Tycoon 2 and expansion objects because that's what I usually work with. All right, um, because I uh, usually like to play uh, maps where I just try to build something which looks as beautiful as possible. Um, I will just select everything that uh, I possibly can select. Uh, of course, if you're trying to make a scenario for other players to play, you probably don't want all objects to be selected. And you'll probably also want to fiddle with inventions uh, a little bit more late, but uh, that'll, something, that'll be something we uh, get to later on. For now, uh, I will just select all of them. And in a separate tutorial, I'll tell you a bit more about the object selection. Anyway, um, when this is done, we can move on to the landscape editor. All right, this is where the fun begins. Now here you can see by default, it creates this big 148 by 148 map. Um, uh, here you can shrink the map if you want. Um, what you'll notice is that the map only shrinks in two directions. Um, I believe someone is working right now on uh, making it so that you can uh, expand the map in any direction but for now it's only in two directions so uh, keep that in mind um, if you want to uh, expand your map at a later point always uh, remember which is the edge uh, that does not expand um, for example if you uh, build your park entrance on this side and later you want to expand the map wait that's going to be difficult because now your park entrance will have to be in a different spot so it uh, might, be, might be best to have the park entrance on this side, on this side, because these edges uh, don't expand. Okay, I rotate the map now, so now um, this is the edge that doesn't expand. But yeah, just uh, a little something to, uh, to keep in mind. All right, um, yeah, uh, of course, here you make your map. Now, OpenRC2 has some uh, um, nice tools that will help you create a new map. So here we have the map generation. Um, so yeah, you can just let the game uh, generate, uh, for example, now it generates a 148 by 148 map with uh, a grassy terrain. You can also have a checkerboard pattern uh, if you're if you're a maniac or uh, some other uh, grid pattern, if you like that. Um, but for now, uh, let's just stick with grass. And we can also make it higher with the base height or we can make the water level uh, um, lower or higher for example the water level is now minus three so if we make the base height of the map minus four you'll see the entire map is covered with water now this is just a, a f if you want a flat map uh, you can also uh, make the game generate random terrain for you it uh, chooses uh, for example uh, yeah it will choose a random uh, terrain type for example now it chooses desert and also uh, will pick some tree types and plant types that uh, will fit that biome um, now it made a snowy terrain so you have the snowy trees so it uh, has uh, several uh, different kinds of uh, terrain type that can generate and if we tick off this random terrain it will just make a temperate map with grass now you can also uh, have a little bit more control over the terrain that it generates. Um, the terrain that was generated now very hilly. Um, with this third tab, you can uh, you have control over the 
the rain that it generates. So for example, you can set the minimum height and the maximum height of the map like so. Um, there's the base frequency, so I guess that's part of an algorithm that uh, generates the terrain of the map. So I believe if you set the base frequency higher, um, yeah, the hills will be more... Um, they will be a bit taller and they rise a bit more rapidly. And yeah, it looks like there will be a... The terrain will be a little... The terrain generation will be a bit more... Uh, let's call it aggressive. We have octaves not really sure what that does but uh yeah it looks like all the features are a little bit smaller now so yeah definitely something you can uh, play around with if you want to have uh, a random ger ter terrain generated for your map you can also again choose the terrain if you want um, but, yeah, um something which you can also do by the way is uh now the height and width of the map are linked you press this little chain now the now the edges are not linked anymore, so that that way you can make a rectangular map if you want. For example, now we have a 93 by 162. If we make them the same again, now we can link them again. So I clicked the little chain, and now you can see they uh, get smaller and bigger together again. Also, once again, choose random terrain, then the game um, generates a terrain for us. So, yeah, um, I think this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can now also see here that some of the lower parts are now a different uh, um, yeah, ground texture. So yeah, it has some uh, fun features there. Now, something which is also really cool is you can uh, choose a height map to use. Um, so I believe the height map has to be a bitmap image. Now, um, for this example, I created a, a really silly one. I have a picture of the Mona Lisa with a, with a guest face. So uh, let's select this one, Mona Lisa one. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to see. Let me increase the scaling a bit. But yeah, this is the Mona Lisa with a, with a guest face. It looks kind of creepy here. And since everything's grass, it's not really visible. But yeah, this is possible uh, if you make a height map. All right, um, for tutorial uh, park, I will just make a, a random terrain here. I will make it slightly hilly. All right, I will. I think this will be our tutorial map. So I will just find the edge that uh, expands and which one does not. Okay, so I will uh, place my park entrance on one of these sides. Now, if you make a scenario um, for other players to play, this may not be as useful. If you make a workbench, you probably want your um, park entrance on one side. I think uh, I'll make it uh, 150 by 150. Uh, this does make the edge look a little bit silly, but um, we'll uh, we'll change that later as we uh, as we build in our scenario. Anyway, um, to be able to uh, play this scenario, we first need to have some owned land, and we need to have a park entrance. Um, you can, by the way, use the scroll wheel to increase this number. Um, I will just uh, make a large area of owned land. In fact, I will just own the whole park. Okay, and I want the entrance of the park to be somewhere over here. I'll just uh, lower the land, flatten the land a little bit here. At the park entrance, uh, I want it somewhere over here. By the way, it, it, uh, by default it uses this path type, the, or the first one in the list. I will now just change it to this uh, brown path type, like this. Now, the path that leads towards the park cannot be owned land, so I will deselect this uh, land owned. And I'll just put it here. And it actually automatically placed the guest spawn point here. 
But yeah, if it doesn't, um, if you want to place a guest spawn point, just select this guest over here and just click it uh, on a piece of unowned land. Now the guest spawn point uh, uh, must be on the edge of the park. It doesn't work if you don't put it on the edge of the park. All right. Uh, yeah, I will just uh, for the inventions. Now in this park, I just want to build uh, build it like a, like a sandbox. So I'll move all items to the top, and that means all items will be invented at the start of the game. If you don't want, uh, if you want, if you make a scenario and you want the, some stuff to be invented as you play, um, just drag them down here in the order that you want them to be invented. All right, here's park options. Um, well, you can set stuff like guest initial happiness, initial hunger, thirst. In most of my sandboxes, I set the initial hunger and thirst really high. And the initial happiness really low. And the reason I do this is uh, to prevent overcrowding from guests. Because uh, in sandbox parks, you usually play for a long time. Guests uh, may end up really happy staying very long. And they may overcrowd your park. So this is the way I usually prevent this a bit. Of course, you can set this to any value that you want. Um, this is this what I typically use in my scenarios. Uh, I typically also set park rating harder to increase and maintain. And guess more difficult to attract. Once again, to prevent overcrowding. But if you make a scenario, you probably don't want to set this. And these other ones, um, yeah, they just make uh, building your park really annoying. So I typically don't use these. Uh, climate. I typically just select hot and dry because that uh, will make it so it's not raining that much and make uh, the temperature nice. Um, but of course, you can also use any of the other ones. Yeah, I think it's pretty uh, self-explanatory what these do. All right, for the objective selection, uh, I typically just select have fun. If you uh, make a scenario, you can use any of these, these other ones, of course. Now I will just quickly fill out these things. Alright, and when this is filled out, the last step is to save the scenario. And when you do that, it will end up in your uh, documents openrc 2 slash scenario folder. Or wherever you have installed openrc 2 Alright, we end up in the main menu again. And I saved the scenario in the other parks group. So here we should somewhere see tutorial park. And here it is, tutorial park. Now in OpenRST2, um, you can also edit your scenario while playing it. So for that, you need to go into the cheat menu. If the cheat menu is not there, go to options. I believe it's under the cogwheel icon. Looks like it's a little bit uh, glitched. Yeah, um, here under the cogwheel icon, you can see here, show toolbar buttons for, and then here you can find cheats. And if you uh, put the check mark there, then here you will see a golden shovel that says cheats. Now, right now, if we look in the on the map, um, yeah, there's no uh, options for us to uh, to edit the map. But if we enable sandbox mode, that gives us the tools to edit the map. So typically, um, when you open one of my sandbox parks, it's usually 50 by 50 or uh, something similar. And then if you enable sandbox uh, mode, now you can change the, map, change the map size if you want. So for example, now we can make it uh, bigger. Now it's 180 by 180. Of course, what you can see is that the land is now not owned. So uh, we can now also change the, uh, the owned land. Now, quickly going to disable the rain. That's another cheat, by the way. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm going to uh, shrink the map again to its original size. I think I'll just stick with 148 by 148. Now, um, what can happen is, uh, well, yeah, typically a sandbox park has the entrance in a certain location. There's a good chance you want the entrance to be somewhere else. What I typically do is uh, I pause the game. Uh, I make sure that there's no guests actually walking from the spawn point to the to the entrance. 
because uh, if there are still guests and they yeah you may get them trapped somewhere over here and that's not something you want something you can also do is uh, to remove all the guests but be careful as this cheat um, there's the side effect at the moment that it can actually mess with the weight of vehicles so if you have rides in your park that are currently running uh, it's always best to uh, close them so that their vehicles despawn and only then use this cheat if you want to remove guests from your park now you could see a guest here and it's now gone so if you want to uh, make your entrance somewhere else then uh, i recommend doing it when there's no guests now i paused the game to actually be able to build um, while the game is paused over here in the in the cheat menu here under the fourth tab we have allow building in pause mode so pausing just makes sure that no guests will uh, spawn while you are changing the entrance of the park it's something which i uh, really always do so um yeah let's just build a new entrance here we'll remove this one we'll make it so we own this land again uh, i'll set this tile to unowned then i'll place a path here remove this path of course we need guests to spawn for this new entrance so i'll build a new guest spawn point always make sure that the guest spawn point is on the edge of your map and now if we let the game run again i'll fast forward a bit then we should see guests uh, spawn again there we go there's a new guest that just spawned in the map all right um i think that's all that uh, i wanted to show you for this uh, tutorial so um just to uh, recap uh, first i showed you uh, how to build a map in the scenario editor also using a map generation and even a height map so this map is also randomly generated you can play a bit with all the different numbers and that way i also created uh, some water uh, in this map um, after you've saved the map you can also keep editing the map in openrc2 if you enable sandbox mode and that gives you the tools again to edit the map but also to place the park entrance in a different spot um, to change the owned and unowned land and also to make a new guest spawn point all right hope this tutorial is useful for you um yeah and i hope to uh, start a new episode of tutorial park soon all right if this tutorial was useful for you please consider giving it a like it would really help out my channel and i'll see you again in the next episode See you later.